Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about OCD. Now for many, it's obsessive compulsive disorder. I will be reading an article. I'll put the link for the article in the description. This is more of an educational site thing, so there's no person to give credit to. I keep checking every week. I want to continue this series of mental health, mental disorders, as a way of, you know, maybe taking a break from the channel and um, not regretting like what I didn't do. In any case, I'll begin now. As I said, I'll read. Sometimes I interject my two cents once in a while. So we got obsessive compulsive disorder is common, chronic, and long-lasting disorder in which a person has uncontrollable, reoccurring thoughts, obsessions, and or behaviors, compulsions, that he or she feels the urge to repeat over and over. Signs and Symptoms People with OCD may have symptoms of obsessions, compulsions, or both. These symptoms can interfere with all aspects of life, such as work, school, and personal relationships. Obsessions are repeated thoughts, urges, or mental images that cause anxiety. Common symptoms include fear of germs or contamination, unwanted forbidden or taboo thoughts involving sex, religion, or harm, aggressive thoughts towards others or self, having symmetrical or in perfect or in a perfect order, or having things in a symmetrical or in a perfect order. Hmm. Compulsions are repetitive behaviors that a person with OCD feels the urge to do in response to an obsessive thought. Common compulsions include excessive clearing and or hand washing, or excessive cleaning. Oh, I got a fucking headache. Sorry. I usually abuse the English language, but I'll try. Excessive cleaning and or hand washing. Ordering and arranging things in a particular precise way. Repeatedly checking on things such as repeatedly checking to see if the door is locked or that the oven is off. Compulsive counting. You know, this is something that you go through life and you meet people and if you think back, or I think back, you know, you know people who have the issue. So it's, it's a common thing, I think, or, you know. Not all rituals or habits are compulsions. Everyone double checks things sometimes. But a person with OCD generally can't control his or her thoughts, behaviors, even when those thoughts or behaviors are recognized as excessive. Spends at least one hour a day on these thoughts or behaviors. Doesn't get pleasure when performing the behaviors or rituals, but may feel brief relief from the anxiety the thoughts cause. Experience significant problems in their daily life due to these thoughts or behaviors. Some individuals with OCD also have a tic disorder. Motor tics are sudden, brief, repetitive movements, such as eye blinking or other eye movements, facial grimacing, shoulder shrugging, and or head shoulder jerking. Common vocal tics include repetitive throat clearing, sniffing, or grunting sounds. Symptoms may come and go, ease over time, or worsen. People with OCD may try to help themselves by avoiding situations that trigger these obsessions. Or they may use alcohol or drugs to calm themselves. Although most adults with OCD recognize that what they are doing doesn't make sense. Some adults and most children may not realize that their behavior is out of the ordinary. Parents or teachers typically recognize OCD symptoms in children. If you think you have OCD, talk to your healthcare provider about your symptoms. If left untreated, OCD can interfere in all aspects of life. Risk Factors OCD is a common disorder that affects adults, adolescents, and children all over the world. Most people are diagnosed by age 19, typically with an earlier age of onset in boys than in girls. But onset after age 35 does happen. For statistics, on OCD in adults, please see the MIH, NIMH, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder webpage. And there's a blue link. I say this a lot. These articles I read, they'll have highlighted, underlined sometimes text, and that leads you to another article or sometimes a 
abstract or you know what testing they did and research. The causes of OCD are unknown, but risk factors include genetics, twin and family studies have shown that people with first degree relatives such as parent, sibling or child who have OCD are at a high risk, higher risk for developing OCD themselves. The risk is higher if the first degree relative develop OCD as a child or teen. Ongoing research continues to explore the connection between genetics and OCD and may help improve OCD diagno di diagnosis and treatment. Brain structure and functioning. Imaging studies have shown differences in the frontal cortex and subcortical subcortical structures of the brain in patients with OCD. There appears to be a connection between the OCD symptoms and abnormalities in certain areas of the brain, but that connection is not clear. Research is still underway, understanding the causes that will help determine specific personalized treatments to treat OCD. Or understanding the causes will help determine. Oh boy. You have a headache where every movement triggers it. <laughs> Eye movement, everything. Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I'll continue. Environment. An association between childhood trauma and obsessive compulsive symptoms has been reported in some studies. More research is needed to understand this relationship better. In some cases, children may develop OCD or OCD symptoms following a stereotypical... Uh, what? A st oh, I was about to say stereotypical. Jesus Christ. A streptococcal infection. This is called pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorders associated with <laughs> strep streptococcal infections. Pandas. I guess it is. I could have just said pandas. Okay, thank you. Pandemic autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorders. Okay, pandas. For more, for more information, please read the NIMH's fact sheet on pandas. And that's highlighted blue. You guys should not have to read the whole fucking thing like I did. Treatments and therapies. OCD is typically treated with medication, psychotherapy, and or a combination of the two. Although most patients with OCD respond to treatment, some patients continue to experience symptoms. Sometimes people with OCD also have other mental disorders such as anxiety, depression, and body dysmorphic disorder, a disorder in, someone, in which someone mistakenly believes that part of their body is abnormal. It is important to consider these other disorders when making decisions about treatment. Medication. Serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SRIs, which include selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, are used to help reduce OCD symptoms. SRIs often require highly daily doses in the treatment of OCD than of depression and may take 8 to 12 weeks to start working. But some patients experience more rapid improvement. If symptoms do not improve with these types of medications, research shows that some patients may respond well to an antipsychotic medication. Although research shows that an antipsychotic medication may help manage symptoms, for people who have both OCD and a tick disorder, research on the effectiveness of antipsychotics to treat OCD is mixed. If you are prescribed a medication, be sure you talk with your healthcare provider or pharmacist to make sure you understand the risks and benefits of the medications you're taking. Do not stop taking a medication without talking to your healthcare provider first. Suddenly stopping a medication may lead to rebound or worsening of OCD symptoms. Other uncomfortable or potentially dangerous withdrawal effects are also possible. That's like a thing with most medicines, right? You know, don't stop it on your own. Talk to your doctor. Because sometimes if you're in enough, you know, panic or stress, they'll help you get off it quicker, but not just to suddenly stop. Anyway, report... Any concerns about side effects to your healthcare provider right away? You may need to ch you may need a change in the dose or a different medication. Report serious side effects to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Ad Adverse Event Reporting Program online. 
Okay, that's a highlighted blue link. Or by phone at 1-800-332-1088. You or your healthcare provider may send a report. Other medications have been used to treat OCD, but more research is needed to show the benefits of these options. For basic information about medications, you can visit the NIMH Mental Health Medications webpage, also highlighted in blue. For the most up-to-date information on medications, side effects, and warnings, visit the FDA website. Psychotherapy. Psychotherapy can be effective treatment for adults and children with OCD. Research shows that certain types of psychotherapy, including cognitive behavior therapy, CBT, and other related therapies, e.g., habit reversal training, can be as effective as medication for many individuals. Research also shows that a type of CBT called exposure and response prevention, EXRP, spending time in the very situation that triggers compulsions, e.g. touching dirty objects, but then being prevented from undertaking the usual resulting compulsion, e.g. hand washing. It is effective in reducing compulsive behaviors in OCD, even in people who did not respond well to SRI medication. As with most, most mental health disorders, treatment is usually personalized and might begin with either medication or psychotherapy, or with a combination of both. For many patients, XEXRP is the add-on treatment of choice when SRIs or SSRI Medications, medication does not effectively treat OCD symptoms or vice versa for individuals who begin treatment with psychotherapy. Other treatment options. In 2018, the FDA approved transcranial magnetic stimulation, TMS, as an adjunct in the treatment of OCD in adults. NIMH is supporting research into these new treatment approaches for people whose OCD does not respond well to the usual therapies. These new approaches include combination and add-on augment augmentation treatments, as well as novel techniques, techniques such as deep brain stimulation. You can learn more about brain stimulation therapies on the NIMH website. Again, that is highlighted. You can hit the link. And again, I say this a lot. For me, it's fascinating. I'll spend a couple of hours by hitting some of these links, especially when I'm preparing for these things, and I get lost in another part of the story, in a sense. So, I can tell right now, I've hit some of these links because they're purple for me. You know, they change color, I guess, when you hit them. So, it's, it's interesting, especially if you're fascinated with this stuff. Finding treatment. For general information on mental health and to locate treatment services in your area, Call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA. Treatment Referral Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP, which is 1-800-662-4357. SAMHSA also has a Behavioral Health Treatment Locator on its website that can be searched by location. You can also visit the NIMH Help for Mental Illness page for more information and resources. Again, lots of blue links to hit, to go look at. Here we go. This is like on everyone. I should just edit, copy, paste this part, but join a study. Clinical trials are research studies that look at new ways to prevent, detect, or treat diseases and conditions. The goal of clinical trials is to determine if a new test or treatment works and is safe. Although individuals may benefit from being part of a clinical trial, Participants should be aware that the primary purpose of a clinical trial is to gain new scientific knowledge so that others may be better helped in the future. Researchers at NIMH and around the country conduct many studies with patients and healthy volunteers. We have new and better treatment options today because of what clinical trials uncovered years ago. Be part of tomorrow's medical breakthroughs. Talk to your healthcare provider about clinical trials, their benefits and risks, and whether one might be right for you. To learn more or find a study at, visit and there's links to NIMH clinical trials webpage, the .gov page, and then there's learn more section where you can hit links for free booklets and brochures. And this is 
once again, this is impacts people's lives, people's friends, their families, their daughters, their sisters, their cousins. People's lives are just impacted greatly by mental illnesses and disorders, and we don't bat an eye sometimes. We don't know certain people uh, at certain times of their life, even close relatives and friends. And I always try to describe it, especially for me with my issues, is, you know, we can learn tools and people could help you with, you know, advice and, you know, but when too many things start happening at once, it starts to create that effect. It just overwhelms people. And imagine trying to go through life and you've got to double check and triple check and, man, it just seems so frustrating, especially when you know what's going on. My heart goes out to people, even if it's something that someone might say, oh, well, you know, clinical depression, you know, you did your podcast on that. Well, you're doing one on OCD. Well, these things are major to me. Like, your whole life is impacted by these things. Daily routines, the joy of certain things gets muted and muddled. I know that as it happens to me. Not that I have OCD symptoms, but a lot of these things are overlapping areas. You know, anxiety. Look at anxiety disorders, right? But then you could have depression and anxiety is linked. Bipolar disorder. It, it is so fascinating to me the brain, but it's also worrisome and how we just let people, ourselves, go through life and go get help, talk to people, talk to your friends, open up. Um, listen, hit some of these links. Again, you don't have to listen to me flub the English language or just generally do these podcasts in a fucking <laughs> sometimes potted out fun vibe or just want to get through it because the headache is pounding you can just hit the link in my description some of these articles well maybe not these particularly but there are some places that actually you can hit a link get to a, the page and hit the button that you can listen to it without having to hear me you know Brooklyn New York just murder language again mental health disorders illnesses however we're gonna um, label them in a sense of severity i don't know but i like to think that all of them are just important factors in people's lives what they go through every day you can be you could have none of these disorders and still have a shitty day and when that shitty day gets compounded by more bad news and this happens it starts to snowball and it gets worse so imagine if you have any one of these disorders, maybe two or three of them. You know, maybe you've gone through life and had such difficult situations that it forced you to create some of these uh, things like they talk about, like traumas in, in, when you're youth. I describe it sometimes as learning skills and developing these cognitive functions that let you survive, that let you, you know, continue on when in some cases it wouldn't be um, something you would want to continue or you would want to strive for and people's lives just spiral out of control and you gotta help people you gotta you know listen to them you gotta understand that these things can impact people even if it's something that you might think is silly like someone who has to check the locks on his door, you know, all, you know, I mean, a certain amount of times per night. And then how many times do you have to do these things before you're okay or before it starts disturbing the people around you, your life in general? How late are you to work every day? Can you even work? It's just a big deal to me in that sense, which is why, again, I started doing these podcasts in this chunk right now. Because I was having my own issues and deciding, well, I might just end doing my podcast and what would I regret? And in the past, when I first started it, I was always wanted to have a certain playlist or section that dealt with these things and have them openly discussing all types of mental illness and disorders. Again, I say mental illness and disorders because in my research and in my studies, like there's things that distinguish them and I'm not... I don't have a, a degree, like I'm not, so I just thought to include that, those, that phrase and everything. So I'm sorry if I'm belittling, like, well, 
you know, not shedding light on a certain aspect because it is a more serious thing. But I want to look at everything as just being, at a base level, disruptive and to a family and something that needs attention, something needs to be brought to people. And, you know, I, this is a big thing in our society now. It's, it's okay you get pumped up when you, you and your friends go to the gym, work out, train your muscles, you know, even get over injuries, right? You got to deal with all the physical therapy, and that's cool, and that's good. But you don't get pumped up with your buddies to go to a psychiatrist or a therapy. And is it the label of a weak society and stuff? You know, I don't tend to think that way because the older I get, the more I start believing or being convinced everything is the brain. Everything. From a perception of reality to the fact that you don't question if your chair is going to hold you every day. Um, when we know that your car might not stop, but we get in, like, all these little things, all the things your brain is doing 24 hours a day is really the ultimate goal of understanding our place here and every, in every aspect that you can think of. I don't care if it's even religion. Because it all comes from your brain. And even if it's real or not, your understanding of it, your, your, your intuitions, your um, beliefs in it, we all know what happens if someone gets brain damage and is on like a respirator and something. You know, we have to face certain facts. So let's treat physical illness, um, injuries, and, you know, wounds and treatment and therapies and equal with psychiatric ones and mental ones. And it's easy to say because I just happen to be, you know, positioned in my life to you know, have certain things happen to my life and look, look, I'm here now type thing. But if it's somebody who glances at something and goes, you know, oh, my friend Pete is, uh, you know, he's really messed up every day. He's got to do these things. And maybe it's just talking. Maybe it's just reading an article and getting just an understanding. I call it like an informed opinion, right? It's one thing to say, ah, blah, 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 blah. it's right and it's another to just take a little bit of a dive in and read an article again i try to balance uh, opinion pieces with like even educational studies and stuff and everything could have flaws in it but at least you're just dipping your feet in you're getting a little understanding of what the cousin might be going through or you're one of your best friends or in some cases it's it's even more tangential it's like your best friend's girlfriend Right or your your brother's wife, and it impacts it, it just ripples out. So first is just understanding, getting a little more informed, maybe being better at listening and understanding of these things. Because when you go through life with family members, you can say the worst things to your family, to the people you really love. You won't say shit like that to your friend. If you think about it, it's it's. It's just for a lot of people, that's how it is. Because family in that situation, they'll love you unconditionally. You can have your rants and scream at people and, you know, just let it out. Because they're going to give you a hug and they're going to love you no matter what. But when it's a friend you've earned for like 30 years, go fucking talk to him in that certain way. And it's not the same. And it's just always outliers and it's not a whole painting everybody with a brush. It's just my delvings into this and in any case we're talking about a p obsessive compulsive disorder something that could be disruptive for people going through life and just everyday daily activities are just you know a, you know hard to get through and how does that impact everything around you do you want to go to work 40 hours a week can you can you do only part-time you have kids you have family wow i just my heart goes out again 
I wish um, I was more informed myself, and that's why I do some of these things. I can say at least, the very least, these last seven podcasts, I've at least dipped my toe back into this realm and have a basic understanding, because I keep reading these fucking articles and fucking up the language. It's got to be doing something to my brain, like, hey, you know, you know some of this stuff. In any case, uh, that's where I'll sort of end this. Um, mental illnesses, disorders, I think are important things to understand to a certain level. To be forgiving, to be, you know, just aware of things and how it impacts everybody's lives. I had a fr- conversation with a friend about one of the hardest jobs I think in the world, was just jokingly, was a night nighttime doorman. And you're like, what? All you have to do is sit behind the desk, there's no real traffic, and that's it. They buzz people in, take, you know, concerns, or no. As I delivered bagels in Manhattan for years and worked from like 10 at night to 7 in the morning, these people were the most tired, dark circles under their eyes, miserable people who could not find a way to make the time go by fast enough to be locked into this slow motion of life. <clears throat> and yeah, you might think, I got friends that are steel workers, I'm so proud of like just how they can you know, put their bodies to exertion every day. But the mental health wear and tear on that door, man, I've never seen anything like it. And I've done deliveries and still, to this day, do sort of deliveries. There's a sort like a deep darkness, a depression. And it's not everybody, of course, but I'm just trying to give a generalization of, yeah, m- physical activities, you know, garbage men, you know, they, they fucking clean up garbage. they always moving. You know what injuries they get? crushing their fucking hands, hernias, whatever. And maybe it's time to just maybe start to equate mental health illnesses, uh, people's depression and what they imagine going to work and being a doorman. And you have to spend those eight hours in slow motion, basically, and your mind aware of everything. What if you have OCD, right? What if you have uh, clinical depression? What if you have bipolar disorder? So... I don't think one job is harder than the other. I believe that we should start equaling out the value of mental health and physical health. And there we go. I hope everybody's doing well. My love goes out to you all. Take care.